Yo, 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 what's good? Easy Breezy Eep here, and this is my The Candyman, or I think it's just Candyman, film review slash discussion. If you haven't seen my reaction video, <laughs> oh, oh my god! <laughs> Pretty fucking scary movie, man, I'm gonna admit. Uh, if you haven't seen that yet, go ahead and click on it here. Uh, give it a like, you know. Pretty cool. So yeah, as I said, this is my review slash discussion. I'm gonna put timestamps at the bottom. So maybe if you don't wanna watch the full thing, you can just focus on the parts that I am discussing. I'm discussing um, just the, my what I thought overall, the horror aspects, the actors, the director, see what else they've done. Um, and also I'm gonna try to talk about some of the themes and some of the racially motivated themes um, because I thought it was pretty obvious some of the things they're trying to comment on and you know that's really watching this movie I'm thinking man I, I wanted when I do the discussion I want to sort of bring that up and I hope that some of you guys that know more about it can uh, tell me more about the things that I missed and I didn't pick up on like I like watching movies I try to do my best to understand it on more than just the story level but you know I'm, nobody's perfect and I'm, I don't claim to be some sort of fucking genius so um re i really love it when you guys are telling me things as well so yeah let's go so what i thought about the movie <sighs> so the story um you know let's talk a little bit about the story and the horror okay we have a horror film and we have a, a woman right and she is first of all she dies at the end of this movie spoilers um which usually in horror movies that have a woman in, as the lead, you know, the final girl or what have you, um, they survive. And in this one, it doesn't. So she doesn't. Not only does she not survive, she basically becomes the monster. So that is a whole flip. Um, I'm trying to think of any that sort of reverse that trope besides this movie. Um, I can't really think of any off the top of my head, but I'm sure it's not the only one. Another thing is, it's hard to try to talk about the story without going into what I want to talk about later. But let's just talk about how scary it is. I, I, you know, you can see from my, first of all, you can see from my reaction video how scary I thought it was. I thought it was great. You know what I thought, why I thought it was great? Like, there's some things where you expect jump scares and, you know, sometimes I did sort of kind of expect them, but not really. I, I thought that the scare, like for example, I thought at one point she was gonna close the the, the medicine cabinet and it's gonna be behind her in the mirror. Uh, but it tur but the fucking guy, the candy man, just puts his whole arm through the goddamn wall, and that shit was crazy. Uh, you know, and just the moments that, because I'm you're sort of engrossed in the movie. The story-wise, I was really into it, man. I don't know, is it just tonight? Like, I'm really into what I'm watching or is it just the movie's pretty good, you know? I wasn't expecting much out of this movie, I'm gonna be honest with you. I wasn't expecting much and I think that plays a factor as well. And I was really engrossed in the movie. So when the scares did happen, uh, even though they were like, they, they did come with loud noises, um, I, I thought they were well placed. So, it, you know, that in itself is an art. I'm not gonna be one of those people that's gonna hate on jump scares too much. I mean, the, they can be overdone, but I thought in this movie, it was kind of, it was it was done well. Um, I thought that the Candyman himself, I mean, his origin story, um, we'll talk about that later, but his origin story was interesting. And then he, his, uh, he did mention something about and I in the in the in the reaction I mentioned that's similar to uh, American Gods, which I've seen only the first season of. But in that story, like the gods are, they are all, they're only as powerful as it seems to be how much people remember them by. And in a modern world, people don't really believe in things like that as much, so they're not as strong as they used to be. Um, it seems like in this movie, it's something similar. I don't think it has anything to do with his power, uh, but he does say he relishes in the fact that he is like, he exists in those rumors and whispers. Uh, like he likes the fact that people talk about him. Um, so like people know his lore and his whole, his whole reason for trying to get, I forgot the main character's name, 
the whole reason for him trying to get her at, for for the, the most of the movie it seems like because he hated that she took that away that there's this sort of other guy posing as the candy man and he was arrested for those murders so like he's like oh i'm gonna get at you for you know making people believe in me less because they found a guy to pin my murders on um and and the only way you can repay that is if you know you help me reclaim back my status of fame like that that's quite of sort of what i thought the motivation of on the surface of what the candy man wanted the other thing as well is it seemed like helen um was like looks like the the girl that he fell in love with and impregnated um the white girl it meant there's paintings of her actually it could be that they're visions of the future by Candyman, so he painted her but it seemed like one of the paintings of her was in one of the murals where it's sort of telling the Candyman story so it seemed like he wanted her helen who was like this reincarnation of the girl he fell in love with um then they wanted he wanted to die together with her so there was something there about that uh as another motivation of why he was sort of making her do this stuff um another thing is like i liked about the story overall was that even though the candy man he wasn't like being hinted at not being real it was just the things he was doing like he they were putting the knife in Helen's hand um he was loosening her straps when he killed the doctor the 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 psychiatrist or psychologist or the doctor um and things like that making it so it's plausible that um that she was killing these people all along instead of the candy man so I like I really was teeter-tottering between that like oh is there gonna be another twist like is she the killer all along and i almost thought it was her um at the end when on the writing it says helen it was you all along so i was like oh shit was she, it her all along was she killing these people all along but no i think i was wrong there when i was reacting to it i think like um he was implying that she was the girl that he fell in love with and the reason he's doing this to her part of it is because like she's like the chosen one like this was her destiny all along something like that and and like there's even the painting of her framed right with the hook going through it um the hook mark going through it, not the actual hook with her hair on fire like what happened to her at the end when she was saving the baby and that's where i was like wait because her hair caught on fire while she was saving the baby so did the candy man know that she was um about to burn you know or is that a supernatural thing that is happened because she became a ghost i don't know there's so there are things they're unanswered like and we don't need to know those que answers to those questions it's but it's like the the resonance there of having those things that are unanswered that are creepy it plays into the whole sort of scariness and the vibe and the mythology of this candy man so i thought all of those things together put together was great um so let's get let's go through the characters one by one and kind of talk about them a little bit so since we're already talking about helen helen lyle and i'm looking here at the wikipedia vir, played by virginia manson let's see what she else she's been in but i don't recognize any of the actors the only person i recognize is the guy who played the candy man and it seems like I might have known him because he's the Candyman. Like I've seen clips of this movie, like the B thing. I like when I was watching it, I like got huge deja vu. Like I've seen this before. I think that's where I might have known him from. But Virginia Madsen, let's see, she's in Candyman. She's in Sideways. I haven't seen Sideways. I know it's a good movie. Paul Giamatti's in it. Uh, the Hot Spot, The Haunting in Connecticut. Oh, I haven't seen that actually. Okay, the original Dune number 23 i've seen i don't remember her um once more i haven't seen highlander 2 I, I mean i haven't seen that movie in, like since i was a child i don't know um the rainmaker the matt damon movie i don't remember her in it i don't know maybe she's not a big character in it so 
Um, yeah, I mean, she's been in things, you know? Gotham with Tommy Lee Jones, she's the main character. That's before Candyman, so she's more late 80s, early 90s movies, so I'm not really, you know, not my era of movies. Like, even the old movies I watch, they're not usually from this time period. I'm not really sure why, you know? Maybe it's just because I was born around that time, so it's like something that I, I don't know. I don't know why I don't watch movies from that era, but it, it, it's really cool. But her character arc, you know, is, well, I'll kind of talk about that with her as well in the theme portion, her and the Candyman himself. Apparently, Virginia Madsen is also in the Swamp Thing TV series and um, the, uh, the Elementary TV series, which I, I haven't, I didn't see any of those. So, but I mean, those are pretty big shows when they came out. Um, uh, so let's talk about the Candyman. Um, who played the Candyman? Tony Todd. Tony Todd and. He plays Robitail, Robitail, Robitail. I think that's his real name. And then the Candyman, of course. I don't remember them mentioning the Candyman's name, his real name, uh, in the movie. He's in Candyman. He's in Candyman 2, I think. He's in Candyman 3. Final Destination 5, yo. Yo, he's in... He's in all the Final Destinations! Oh my god, he's in Final Destination 5, Final Destination 1, 2, and 3. No wonder I know him! So, that's where I know him from. I know him from Final Destination. And he's in Platoon. He's on The Man From... Yeah, so a lot of movies that... He's in The Rock, apparently. Um, I don't remember him in that. But mostly horror stuff, so like his his the actor tony todd he's in final destination um i think he's the guy like who tells them like yo this is like he's the one who sort of gives the exposition on what's going on to them i think and and people like so he that's him hatchet and hatchet too i know so he's in he's in other scary things um which i haven't seen a lot of these sort of horror movies from the early 2000s so um yeah you know so Tony Todd, Ted Raimi is in it. He's an extra in the beginning. Sam Raimi's brother. Um, oops. Uh, okay. So Trevor, the person who played Trevor is uh, Xander Berkeley. Um, he seems familiar actually. I think I've seen him in something recently, or maybe not. But okay, I was what? Yeah, Terminator Two, Air Force One. He's like a character actor. He's he. I think he's in like <laughs> The Walking Dead. He's in the Walking Dead TV series. He's fucking Gregory. I knew he was a fucking sleazeball, man. The first time I saw him, I was like, this guy's a fucking sleazeball, dude. It's because he's a fucking sleazeball in the Walking Dead as well. Oh my God. So, okay, let's talk about Gregory and Stancy. I, I don't I don't know who plays Stacy. It's just some girl. Uh, but sorry, actress who plays Stacy. But um, uh, look, right when he said in the beginning, what, you think something's going on? Like... He, he's fucking Stacy, like, or he's about to. So like, you know, that was sort of the least surprising part of the whole movie was that eventually he was going to get caught um, having an affair with a student. And presumably this is a big lecture hall. So this is, these are undergrads we're talking about. And this guy's a fucking old ass dude with a bald ass head. So, um, you know, look, I know their age gaps and love, Ain't not, I mean, agent and but numbers sort of thing, but come on, you're a student though. Like, it's more of the power dynamic. Like, not your your fucking student. Uh, anyway, um, and I, I I know that's actually a pretty common thing, but it's not usually like, I don't think it's usually professors and students, but but uh, that get together. But you know what? Like, it actually it is a pretty common thing, but uh, so you know not you know it does happen. So you know whatever it doesn't make him any less of a sleazeball um for that uh not because of it because he's fucking married dude like come on man oh yeah bernadette bernadette the best friend um who played bernadette casey lemons don't know who she is but yes feels bad for bernadette you know she died about halfway through um she was killed by the, you know, she was just an innocent bystander, man. This fucking Helen was just doing too much <laughs> and she got caught in the crossfire. All right, so let's move on. This movie was directed by 
Bernard Rose. Uh, I don't know if he wrote the movie as well. I should find out. Uh, yeah, yeah, he he wrote the movie based on a short story called "The Forbidden" by Clive Baker. Clive Bark, Clive Barker. Sorry, Clive Barker. I don't know what else he's written. Um, doesn't seem like there's anything I recognize here, but uh, so he's a writer director and. It seems like um, Candyman, Immortal Beloved, I don't know what that is. Devil's Violinist, I don't know what that is. Paper House, Samurai Marathon. Anna Karenina, the 1977, ver 1997 version. So, and this guy, there's like three movies with this actor, Danny Houston in it. So a lot of like not really big blockbuster movies and quite a few horror stuff. So I think it's safe to say Candyman was his biggest movie. Um, but kudos, you know, it, it, he did, he, he, he knew the assignment, did, got the job done, you know, and uh, you know what it is, like, it doesn't matter because you have Candyman, so that's like an achievement already, you know, like, people are always going to know you for directing Candyman, people are going to keep watching Candyman, um, and it's, it's a cult classic, you know, so, and now they're remaking Candyman, and more people are going to watch the original Candyman, and we'll talk about, you know, our expectations for the remake later let's get to the themes man let's get to the themes let's go this this is i've been talking for too long on bullshit. so i said i would talk about the themes in this movie <laughs> there's really only one theme worth talking about because everything else is sort of like kind of genre driven like the cheating husband and um the the kids in the beginning getting killed for you know have the babysitter you know got the baby killed fucking dumb babysitter but sam raimi's brother apparently survived somehow um but yeah uh let's talk about the racial motivated stuff so the things that i noticed right away was the urban legend the first thing is like all right the urban legend is urban like literally so it, it's like south side chicago the people who knew about it the murder was oh, i forgot the, the lady that she saw in a newspaper it happened in this project and her apartment is like the sister building of the project so they turned it in but for, because of some because of where it was it couldn't become a project so they converted it into like luxury apartments but um the thing about it is she had to ask the two custodians or uh, ladies who were cleaning the school she was working in weird that she was working in a high school i thought it looked like a high school because of all the lockers um but maybe she's supposed to be at the university i don't know um and they were from the projects right they were older african-american women and it seems like they're just working you know these the custodian jobs for you know to earn a living and seem like good people so she went there with her friend bernadette and they were scared and the way they talked about the projects was i get it it's it could be scary it's scary like you don't really want to go there maybe you know i i've never been to south side chicago projects so i don't know how it is especially how it was in the early 90s um but uh, i get that it could be scary but it's also the way they depicted it it seemed like okay there's these two affluent women you know educated women going to the projects and they're afraid of it they brought like protection like i think bernadette brought like pepper spray or i don't know what she brought she brought like pepper spray and a knife like some shit like that and they were being accosted they were being you know cat called by the guys down there and even the the mom lady the single mom was like we're not all like the guys down there like fuck like you know I, I don't i'm not sure how they were trying to portray those guys they all were sort of wearing the same color so like like purplish bluish so were they like supposed to be gang members or part of the same clique or they just lived there and they were just all homies like i couldn't really tell they weren't really it didn't really matter but they were accosting them and she was like taking pictures of the projects like people don't live in the projects like like why are you taking pictures of the stairwell <laughs> like you know so it, it was like this sort of foreign land that she's investigating like like and they're supposed to be afraid of this place like 
it made that sort of like the forbidden forest of the movie was like the projects and then they went deeper into the projects and they found an apartment that was really a supernatural apartment because that's where the candy man was living that's where the baby was stuck so like this whole dichotomy of you know the main character is white but her friend is black but her friend is like didn't not poor you know she's educated so she's from that world and versus this like poor projects world it's like okay the, these white people are scared of going to the projects so there is a fear there that's already inherent due to the socio-economic structure of chicago right there's a fear there that has nothing to do with supernatural and then on top of that right these these girls are doing something that they're forbidden to do because it's supposed to be dangerous you know going through the projects alone with no guys and and then this girl this helen she's infatuated with the Candyman lore she sees a, a painting of him and she's infatuated with this candy man you know that she's supposed to be afraid of um and it's like it's very reminiscent of the origin of Candyman. So let's talk about the origin of Candyman. Okay. So the origin of Candyman is breaking, you know, all odds. This the slave, his the Candyman's father was a slave who I'm not sure how, but he he got his freedom somehow and became a businessman and became rich. So that guy had a son, okay? Who, is, who eventually becomes the Candyman, he was a son, he was well-educated, he was rich, and he was an artist, right? Thus all the paintings, right, and the murals. And he was an artist who other, you know, wealthy families, all white, obviously, because most people back then in the U.S. were, were white, who were wealthy, and landowner. They mentioned, they specifically said landowner, okay? And landowner means, okay, you can be rich back then, but if you're a landowner, you're rich, rich, so that means you're white and the landowner had a daughter okay and then the another word they had to use was virginal right to capture her virginal beauty was what they said and um and she was in, impregnated they had an affair um outside of marriage and uh which you know nothing wrong with that these days but back then you know that would have been very taboo as but that the craziest part is that wouldn't even been the most taboo thing because back then i mean you know the because of america and its racist history um their interracial couples was just not a thing back then so especially with a woman you know a white girl lady and he's a black man so they he was lynched he was lynched because of it and this is like this is not a unique thing like this is not supposed to be like something like oh my gosh i can't believe that happened like it's like oh well yeah that unfortunately shit like that happened back then which is fucked up uh and he's not even like you know he's a rich black man who back in the 1890s so that was you know even then they couldn't live with it so they lynched him they cut off his arm and uh fed him to the bees um put honey on him you know and he died and that's how he became the this boogeyman the candy man um now the thing is we we still don't know his name so it's like weird i mean there there was a name written when i checked it but i don't think they mentioned his name so and be, other than that we don't really know anything about him uh this candy man guy so but the thing what we do know is he likes killing people so even though he has a backstory, there was no sort of sympathy, right, towards him. There was no sympathy given to him. So uh, he is still this like monster, this murderous monster. So in the movie, what's happening here, you have to realize what's happening here. There is a white lady who is afraid of going, he's supposed to be afraid of going to the projects and is is infatuated with black culture this you know black mythology this candy man 
and all the people that live in the project are like lady look back off dude don't this is not your place like this is not your space get out of here you know like and she's like no no i i'm you know i'm all in you know i'm all in and then she goes all in and the candy man actually contacts her frames her for killing a dog and her best friend and kidnapping a baby um so now she's afraid of this candy man so the story here is this white lady is afraid of a black man right so i understand how that could be misinterpreted as like perpetuating stereotypes um but at the same time it's also in a meta way commenting on these stereotypes and the reason for the stereotype or the reason for the fear against this candy man is that this candy man was murdered unjustly by a lynch mob because he was black so like there's a kind of twisted circle going on here and to top it all off um it seemed like at first um the candy man was targeting her but then now you're thinking why isn't he killing her why is he why is he killing all her friends like and why is he framing her and at first it's like yeah he's just trying to get fame and regain his popularity back or whatever but then you realize like he's like you're the one you're the one and he wants her to die with him because like he was in love like it reminded helen reminded him of his like first his love um so it was like a weird thing that's going on there and that somehow her saving a baby and dying for it also made her a boogeyman like a murderous ghost like so now she was also wronged in a way right she was wronged by the candy man she was wronged by uh sort of society for making her for believing that she was some sort of bad guy for something she didn't do something she didn't do anything bad so she's the bad guy still similar to the candy man himself he didn't do anything wrong but he, because of society he's the bad guy uh and then she comes back to seek revenge and she specifically did it to her husband who was with another woman um which he fully deserved i hope she i wish she killed stancy too but um yeah so i i don't know I, i'm kind of just maybe i'm just talking in circles but that's sort of the parts i noticed now what are the deeper meanings behind it maybe you guys can tell me that's sort of the most i got from it watching it for the first time just got done watching it and i've been talking on this topic for about seven minutes so yeah how about you guys let me know what i missed what i got wrong uh, i you know i hope i'm sort of on the right track here um but it's very interesting you know and i think this movie is like i think it's a smart movie i i, I think it's smarter than people maybe give it credit for you know and i feel like on repeat viewings or further analysis or maybe smarter people than me who know more about you know um race relations you can tell me uh, what how this movie signifies how it's perceived um and um you know what it's actually trying to say because i'm i'm sort of getting mixed messages here and it's like is this movie perpetuate per, like sort of perpetuating the stereotypes like we should be afraid of you know the urban black community or is it like in a way making everybody else understand it more you know because we understand that that violence stems from a racist history so i i see both things happening here and uh yeah you guys let me know what you guys think on that um is it, it it's a good talk it's a topic worth mentioning and i think it's like it's resonating especially nowadays you know all of these things are still exist you know um all of this uh racial inequality socioeconomically and of course with, with all the police brutality that's finally coming to light which has been going on for decades you know i've since those times you know it's still happening today and at least now we can record them if, even if we can't do much about it so you know it and yeah which leads me to the remake which leads me to the remake because th these themes here are still something that you know america specifically are tackling with um uh so now that we're getting a remake 
of oops of Candyman produced by Jordan Peele who look if you've seen us and if you've seen Get Out very oh, you know very socioeconomic racially themed sort of pieces there you know so I'm I am excited actually to see I know he's not directing it, but I think he did write it, the new script. I thought he had a part in writing the new script. He's producing it, so his input is heavily, you know. So I am I really do want to see how they modernize these themes and try to relate it to the sort of modern America, not the 90s America. And are they going to keep, you know, the backstory? Are they going to change things? Are they doing the same story? Or are they remaking the story but just having the same monster, the same Candyman, you know, but it's a totally different story. Maybe he comes back, you know, or is it a complete remake? Are we gonna see a different version of Helen? I don't think so. Because I think the the main character is that guy from Aquaman. Yeah, Yaya, Ab Ab Yaya Abdul Mateen the second, he's the main character in this movie. Uh so or he's one of them at least so i don't see it being going to be the same story so it'll be a reinterpretation and i'd love to see i'm, I'm really excited actually for Candyman the remake so let me know what you guys think about it what do you expect i have high expectations because you know jordan peele it's not just key and peele like i used to watch him at tv as well as a kid and so i i like i've been watching jordan peele and it's not really a surprise that he's this sort of master movie maker now, this like genius movie maker, because um, comedy, man, something about comedy, uh, people who are good at comedy are usually very, very smart people. Something about it, like um, most comedians are either misunderstood uh, or they have to play this act of to be funny, um, but actually like to make serious topics funny uh and you know just timing and comedy is just it's such an art like if you're a comedian like if you're a stand-up comic like you're a one-man show remember that like you have to hold an audience on your own on stage and if you're just uh, if you're a comedic actor um similar thing you know Com comedy is all about comedy is comedy is a very intricate art form so it's not a surprise when successful comedians venture out into different things and they are still you know they are very good at it because usually these are very smart people so i'm not surprised jordan jordan peele is doing amazing uh and i'm excited to see uh anything he makes anything jordan peele makes i'm gonna watch so Candyman is one of them and i'm excited oh let's not forget special effects i always seem to forget special effects but it's actually what i really want to talk about um you know practical effects a lot of practical effects here i can't think of anything that was sort of special effects even uh candy flying out the window breaking the glass i think he was just being pulled by a wire um but uh the craziest one don't let's not talk about the practice the makeup and the gore that shit looked real as fuck that shit was nuts um and then that the the shit that was all over the bathroom stalls that was fucked up as well you can smell that shit i was gagging um the violence the fucking decapitated dog but the craziest part the craziest part was the bees i don't think those were fake bees those looked like real bees because when they tried to do special effects on bees like they showed the bees engulfing this chicago in the beginning and then they showed the bees coming out of the fire when candy man gets burned that sh you can tell that was those were special effects it was like you know they had the they had the characters on a green screen or something like that you can tell they were like they were like cut out it seemed like two separate layers they put together you know i know a little bit from corridor crew so i you know <laughs> anyway um and uh but the bees look real as fuck and i actually took a look and it, it seems like those were real bees fucking trevor todd what's his name tony todd uh yeah tony todd man <laughs> fucking trooper dude he put that shit in his mouth they put the bees in his mouth fucking crazy fucking legend man you're fucking legend tony todd uh yeah anyway let's let's get right to let's get right to <laughs> the next thing 
kudos on the fucking that shit was nuts i thought that was crazy yeah so i might i'm sure i missed a lot of things because like i i just just watched the movie um i'm interested now you know i'm interested on in this movie I'm, I'm actually gonna go ahead and maybe do some reading and watch some videos on it like uh i, I want to i i really do am curious to see what like I, all the things i missed about what i just watched so because i think this is you know guys i thought this was a good movie uh let me know what you guys think um i hope that you guys like my discussion review uh, i don't really have anything much else to say about it this movie the main thing was i wanted to bring up was the topic of um how race plays a factor in this movie because i think yes it's a horror movie and it's good it's good i thought the twists were crazy like her escaping the mental hospital you know uh, the fucking her getting possessed waking up to a decapitated dog like all that shit was crazy nuts but i think the important part about this movie and what makes it ring true to reality is the commentary it has between this affluent you know academic pretending they even had that character like i do declare like speaking in an english language like oh you haven't you haven't read my publication <laughs> and then telling the story about the history of candy man that guy and then you have the other side of the spectrum you have a single mom who's trying to feed her child like the only thing she cares about is trying to keep safe keep her child safe and work this you know this job seems like as you know something minimum wage like back then trying to survive in the projects like we are seeing two different worlds here and we're sort of seeing a history of racism that is you know implied here that leads to the separation of these you know these two different worlds socioeconomic imbalance that we're seeing in two different communities so you know it, it was great uh yeah uh, let me know what you guys think uh i'll leave it there thanks for watching if you made it this far i hope you know if i said something weird or wrong you correct me down there if i'm missing anything from the movie correct me down there uh i'd love to hear from you guys and uh thanks for watching and i think i'm gonna do apocalypse now for the next movie so uh stay tuned for that go ahead like and subscribe and remember until the next video easy does it